And it turns out that indeed the result is normal distributed. So we obtain our prediction mu t over line and sigma t square over line. So this is our belief over line. And the computation that leads us there is somehow tedious. And so if you want, you can look it up, for example, in the probabilistic robotics book by Thrun, Borgard and Fox. After all these computations, what comes out is that our mu t is just given by a times mu t minus 1 plus our control u t. And remember, our motion model was a x t minus 1 plus u t. So all we have to do is to apply the motion model to our mean, which will give us our new mean. And as for the variance, sigma t square over line equals a squared times sigma t minus 1 squared plus sigma r squared. And this is also really simple. We have to multiply our old variance, which gives us the uncertainty that we had in position, by a square. So this is a kind of a slope of our motion. And then add up the noise of our motion, so also called the system noise. So all there is to do is move forward by moving the center of the distribution and add the noise of our movement to the noise which we already had in our last position. So this is surprisingly simple. And so this is our overall procedure for the Kalman filter. We have our previous belief, which is given now as mu t minus 1 and sigma t minus 1. And we have our movement, control, which is given as ut and sigma r. And we have given our measurement, which is given as c and our measurement standard deviation sigma q. And so we will handle those as variances. So we have two steps. The prediction, this was just on the last slide. And then we have the correction, which was also on a previous slide. So in the correction we first compute our Kalman gain. And then we compute our new mu and our new sigma squared. And then we return our new belief, which is simply our new mu and our new sigma squared. And this is the very important Kalman filtering in one dimension. So remember, this is the old belief, this is the control, and this is the measurement. So now you're able to program your first Kalman filter, and I put together this program for you, the SLAM6F Kalman versus histogram filter. And this program contains two filters, namely the histogram filter and the Kalman filter. So it consists of the cleaned up version of the histogram filter, which we had a look at previously, and in addition now integrates a Kalman filter. So you can directly compare the two different results. So first of all, I defined a density. Well, this density is just given in terms of the first and second moment of the distribution, meaning mu and sigma square. So there's a two meaning sigma square. So all this class does is it holds two float variables. Then there's the plotting routines, the histogram plot from the earlier program. And now there's also Kalman plot, so you don't need to worry about plotting the results. There's the histogram filter step, which uses a convolve and a multiply. And in order for that to work, you have to import up here from your last solution, the move, convolve and multiply routines. And then there's the Kalman filter step. And as you see, the histogram filter step and the Kalman filter step, they are identical. They take a belief, control and measurement and they return a prediction and correction. The only difference is that in the histogram filter step, these were classes with discrete values, whereas now these are classes, each of which contain a mu and a sigma square. Now in the main function, you see every major call is done twice. First of all, I initialize the position here for the histogram. This is from the previous code, meaning the position is the distribution, in this case a discrete Gaussian, centered at 10 with a sigma of 1. And now I also initialize a position with an underline. All those underlines are for the Kalman filter. And instead of a distribution, I use a density, a different class, but otherwise it looks completely identical. Then I initialize the controls. For the histogram, I use the dist, whereas for the Kalman filter now, I use the density. The only thing that changes here is that my density always handles sigma square. So I have to square those values. And for the measurements, it's also identical. For the histogram case, I initialize using dist. And for the Kalman filter case, I initialize using density. Otherwise, the values are identical. And also, the filter is identical. 
the histogram case, I do a histogram filter step, which gives me the new prediction and position. And in the Kalman filter case, I do a Kalman filter step, which gives me the new prediction and position. And in each case, I call the appropriate plot routines. And that's all there is to do. So everything you will have to do is, you have to implement, using the previous formulas, this Kalman filter step. So it takes a belief, control and measurement, each of which is an instance of a density class and it computes a prediction and a correction. In this case I have put in here the prediction is just a copy of the belief where I move the center by 10 and I increase the sigma square by 100 and the correction is just a copy of the prediction. So both of those lines are not correct and you'll have to replace them with your own correct solution. Now please program this and this will be the last programming assignment.